I must have been, I don't know, 11 or 12 years old, something like that. And my sister brought home a college anthropology textbook. And there were these fabulous reconstructions of the ape men, of, the, of these fossils. And I just was hooked. That little girl from Minnesota, Jeannie Scott, had no idea she would spend her life defending that textbook. Today, evolution science in our classrooms is under attack from creationists with chilling results. In one nationwide survey, 37% of people favor teaching only creationism. Jeannie first saw the problem in the 1970s. She was, by then, Dr. Scott, teaching anthropology at the University of Kentucky. I would get things written on my um, test saying, you know, I know you want this answer, but I don't believe it, you know. God created everything all at one time. So in 1987, Jeannie Scott agreed to run the National Center for Science Education in Oakland. Here, among awards and mementos, the dead serious job is keeping evolution in science classrooms and creationism out. The center monitors school districts, advises teachers and parents, and keeps scientists informed. Their staff is tiny, but don't be fooled. We put together coalitions at the grassroots of teachers and scientists and clergy and civil libertarians, people from the business community when we can get them. And that combination, much more often than not, does win the day. In October 2004, a war broke out in the small town of Dover, Pennsylvania. The famous example, Dover, Pennsylvania. In this recent case, a court overthrew school board attempts to teach creationism in the science class. Behind the scenes, Jeannie Scott. She was the person pulling everything together, providing us with scientific support, helping to build the strategy, deciding upon who would be the expert witnesses. Brown University in Rhode Island is where you find cell biologist Ken Miller. He co-authored the science textbooks under fire in Dover. Miller says besides Jeannie's court victories, her other far-reaching impact has been... To foster an ethos in which scientists are encouraged to get out in the real world, to bring their ways of working and their ways of thinking across to the general public. I want to show something to you. This is our T-Rex from Montana. At Cal Berkeley's Museum of Paleontology, Judy Scotchmoor runs an evolution website and teacher workshops with Jeannie's help. She says Jeannie has been invaluable to science teachers. Teachers have understood that there, there's a phone call away from an answer. It may be, uh, where do I find good resources to teach a particular aspect of science, or how do I deal with this misconception? And between her staff and Jeannie herself, they have the answers. I think we are all very grateful to her. Francisco Ayala is an evolutionary biologist at UC Irvine and spearheads evolution education for the National Academy of Sciences. He too relies on Jeannie for updates and advice. And he knows why even the creationists respect her. He's very thoughtful and very considerate of the interest and thinking of religious people, even if he may not necessarily be religious. How I marveled at your restraint at not referring In to... In fact, science. Jeannie's so guess. fair, she gives the hate mail and thank you notes equal space in the National Center for Science Education yes. restroom. And then we get this yeah. is Carrie and I in Colorado. But she never forgets whom she works for. Children, like her own daughter, whose birth announcement displayed her chromosomes, and who today works with mom. As for creationism being touted as a science, Jeannie says our kids deserve better. It's an attack upon evolution. And students learn falsely that evolution is some kind of shaky science that, that maybe is not really reliable, it's not as, as strongly supported as other aspects of science, and, and that's just wrong. So maybe it's no accident that outside Jeannie's window sits an elementary school whose students may never know that across the street someone fights for their future. I know that if NCSE hadn't been around low these 20 years or so, the situation would be a lot worse because, frankly, we are effective. Uh, the creationists will tell you that. This is the best job I've ever had. No question about it. I got the best job in the world. <laughs>